Today, we're looking at WPS Office and is it a good alternative to Microsoft Office? Let's get into it. Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Adrian Reddix and today we're talking about WPS Office. WPS Office is a Chinese-based software, if that's important to you, and it was started in 1988 as Kingsoft and over the years it evolved into WPS Office. WPS Office is made for a lot of platforms. You have it on Windows, Mac, Linux, iOS, Android, and the new mobile operating system, Harmony OS. In the free version, which is the one we're reviewing today, they have your core Office Suite apps, like a document writer called Doc, a spreadsheet program called XLS. PPT is gonna be a PowerPoint presentation. They have a PDF editor and also a text editor. My first gripe of WPS Office is the install experience, which is just like anything else, but a little different. When you're installing WPS Office, it just installs like anything else, and that's fine, but it takes over everything. It doesn't ask permission to be your default in anything. And I thought it was just me, so I went back and reinstalled it uh, at least three times to make sure I didn't miss anything because, you know, they'll ask you, hey, do you want this to be your default for this, this, that, and other? It never asks. It just assumes since you wanted WPS Office, it just made itself the default for my document, my DOC files, or for my Excel files, or my PowerPoint files. The way I like to run things is uh, different office suites, I think, do different things good. So I'll have, I'll have Microsoft Office as my main uh, PowerPoint thing, but LibreOffice, I like the writer on that better. You know, so I like to customize, but that's just me. It just took everything off, even my text editor, which I use Notepad++. I didn't like that part of it. You know, I wish it gave me the option if I wanted to make it default, and I just assume just because I downloaded it, I wanted it to be default which wouldn't be a problem if you don't have a Office Suite already on your computer. So the color scheme of WPS Office follows Microsoft Office because when you're the king, people follow you because if you had some weird thing and had like the document writer be like purple and the spreadsheet be orange, then, you know, people are used to those colors and not having something that's similar um, kind of throws people off. People don't think design matters. Design matters when it comes to things that people use every day, be it colors or the way something works or the way something is. So design matters. So having a very similar color scheme to Microsoft Office helps people um, who are used to that uh, transition to WPS Office. WPS Office claims Microsoft Office compatibility, and during my testing, I didn't see any problems. I didn't have a very extensive testing as far as testing to see if macros showed up or things like that, but any basic stuff like uh, basic Word documents, basic spreadsheets, and very, very basic PowerPoints uh, worked fine between the two apps. So me creating something in WPS and then open it in the Microsoft Office and vice versa, it worked. WPS Office Free is a free software and not open source. So what's the difference between free software and open source software? <laughs> I'm glad you asked. Let's look at the Wikipedia definition of open source software. So according to Wikipedia, open source is source code that is made freely available for possible modification and redistribution. If you go a little further down, it says open source promotes universal access via an open source or free license to a product's design, blueprint, and universal distribution of that design or blueprint. When you talk about open source software, it's for the community, essentially. Like we put it out there so people can use and develop and make better and things like that. So it's really universal software. Uh, um, just kind of like universal medicine. It's instead of medicine for all, it's software for all. So anybody can get the code and use the software for what it's designed to do or make it better, make plugins, just make things better for the good of all and not just the profit of few. Now, free software can still kind of have that model of free for all, but most of the time, if it's free, it's a marketing. Things. Like this free version is to market the premium version. And that's pretty much what this WPS Office 
is doing. It's marketing the premium version of WPS Office because with WPS Office, instead of having the free version be a standalone thing, um, it seems like there's tiers to the, the WPS Office experience. You have the free version, which you know you have all your basic functions like uh, document creation and uh, Excel formulas or, or uh, spreadsheet formula. They kind of limit you on different things. Like it has a built-in screen recorder, which is fantastic, but you can't use it unless you sign up with them, unless you give them information about you, which, you know, I hadn't got it yet, but I'm pretty sure the information that I put out there on well, my, it's a dummy email account, that I'm gonna get different advertisements of having me trying to buy it, and that's fine. I mean, that's what you sign up for. If you sign up for it, you kind of expect them to try to sell you on something premium. The next level is going to be, I call it the free sign up tier where, you know, things start to unlock like screen recording. You can't do screen recording in the regular mode, but you can do it in the sign up mode for five minutes. Anything above five minutes, you need a premium membership. So what they do is they put all the premium features in the free one. They just put it behind a paywall. WPS Office locks their premium features behind a paywall like text editor or screen recording or some conversions. So if I'm doing a PDF to DOC conversion, uh, which that's a very common thing for people who have to edit PDFs and things like that, they'll let you do up to three pages, anything more than that you got to get the premium version. So they seem like to give you a little taste. I mean it's good marketing. They give you a little taste of what could possibly be and if you, they, they're just drumming up that demand for it. So you'll eventually like get frustrated and like, oh, I really need this. I'm going to pay this $30 a year and get to it. And that's how much it costs as of the recording of this video. It's a $30 a year product. Also on the free tier, they limit the amount of templates you can have. So it's a very limited template. But, you know, it does have Office compatibility. So if you have something that you created in Office or some other suite, um, theoretically, you should be able to switch it and use it in WPS Office. In the sign up tier, a couple things unlock, right? So you have one gig of storage on the WPS Cloud. WPS Cloud helps you connect your desktop, but whether it's Mac, Linux, or Windows, to your mobile device, uh, the three that, that we listed, you know, iOS, Android, and Harmony OS. So you can go between the two, edit on your phone, edit on here. If you forget something and you have it uploaded to the cloud and you go to a meeting, well, you can have it on your phone or you can vice versa, do something on your phone and, you know, so it keeps things synced up. It also unlocks a lot of the templates that were behind so you got the sign up wall and the pay wall. So behind the sign up wall, you get more templates for WPS Office. So is WPS Office a good alternative to Microsoft Office? Yes and mostly no. The yes part. It's only a good alternative once you pay. To pay, you have to want the features that you pay for. Like if you need an easy screen recorder or if you need an easy to use PDF uh, editor, because it is easy to use. That's one thing that's really positive about WPS Office. It's not a complicated Office suite to use, but those more premium features are behind a paywall. So the only way that you would know that you wanted to use the premium features is sign up for the free trial, right? So you sign up for the free trial and then that's the only way that you would know if you wanted to buy it. And no, because if you don't mind having a mesh of different programs, you can get the same functionality from the WPS Office in a couple different programs. But what WPS Office does well is having all that under one hood. So what Office Suite do you use on a day-to-day -day basis? Let me know in the comment section. Hey guys, that's it. Thanks for joining me. If you like this type of video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like this type of video, give me a thumbs down. Also, if you like more types of videos like this, I picked out this LibreOffice versus OnlyOffice video, and this one is gonna be what uh, YouTube thinks you should watch, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Have a good one.